My name is Margot Briggs. Uh, I'm working in FIO, Forestry Department. I'm a senior forestry officer. My answer would be it's not that if they can, they must. They must work together because I think this is the only way how we can invent, you know, and kind of implement transformation and transformational change towards sustainable and resilient development pathways. Um, I would like to illustrate this by providing one example from FIO's work on food nexus and landscapes. According to the FIO recent report on food security and nutrition published in 2018, the hunger is on rise. I don't know if you're aware of this, but after decades of declining, unfortunately the hunger since three years has been noticed on rise. And that is that 821 million people currently are hungry and undernourished. This is one in nine. At the same time, growing population, global population, that will be nine billion people by 2050 would require a lot of more food. We need to feed the planet. Agriculture would need to produce 60% food by 2050. Just imagine what kind of impact this can have on our landscapes, on our forests. So we need to find the proper way forward. And there are many, many tools that are available and approaches, for example, integrated landscape approach that is very much of a heart of the discussions here, uh, integrated land use planning tools, uh, collective tenure rights, and many, many other approaches uh, related to sustainable agriculture, climate smart agriculture, and so on. So we need to work together. We need to have a better and stronger collaboration at various level of governance to, um, to address uh, those issues. I think the opportunities are with different existing tools. The opportunities are also with what one of the speakers at one of the plenaries has said uh, earlier today. We need to t take climate change personally. Uh, we need to start from our own table. We need to start from our own behavior. So I think a lot about the behavioral change uh, at large in order to scale this up uh, must happen. In our own work, you know, like FIO has been doing so far, we need to obviously use existing tools uh, through different uh, approaches in forestry, in agriculture, also in Red Plus, uh, to accelerate the implementation. I can talk a little bit about data collection, and I think the innovation in data collection has been a game changer. We're currently working with a platform called CEPAL. It's a cloud-based technology that allows countries to process data on forest, on land use, and can detect land use changes with pretty precise um, information. Uh, this has become a game changer because this is accessible, uh, it's uh, uh, free because we're based on uh, data free, uh, free data sources. Uh, and, uh, you know, another example that I can give is from local level, because you can do this also at various levels, community level, indigenous people's level. Um, indigenous communities in Panama or Guatemala, they use drones. So we had a big program on training indigenous peoples in the use of drones for collecting data. This has become a hit, a success, because it's in principle, you know, a very easy tool once you learn it. And it can help not only to uh, assess information about climate change or carbon, but also help the communities to manage their resources in a sustainable way. I congratulate C4 in organizing this GLF session. It's a fantastic platform for knowledge exchange and for networking. So, uh, yeah, I think, you know, this is, uh, this is a wonderful event. We have contributed to this event to num numerous sessions from Red Plus, Tenure, uh, Indigenous Peoples' role in transforming our landscapes to more sustainable. And we are happy to continue working with C4 in the future.